as we have a new ministry, as we going to go through the introduction, uh, the men are still having a meeting, so they're not quite through yet. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, once again, like I said, just welcome everybody. Make yourself feel at home. Uh, I'm excited. Thankful for each and every one of you to be here. Uh, but before we go any further, I'm going to ask Brother Randy if you would lead us in prayer. Go ahead, brother. Good afternoon, everybody. I am not the pastor. <laughs> He's still back there, I guess, trying to get the deacon straightened out. I don't know. But uh, I want to welcome each and every one here tonight. Uh, thankful for all that's come out to show support for this ministry tonight. I know it means a lot to Sister Lid and, and me also. Uh, thank you for the church for being here and the support that you've always shown this ministry. Uh, before we go any further, we got some special music for you. I want to ask Brother Gene if he would pray for us. Opportunity to come into your presence, Lord. We just praise you, Lord, and worship you. Lord, as the singers begin to sing, Lord, I just pray, Lord, you anoint their voices, let their music speak to our hearts. And Lord, we just ask a special blessing on the ministry that will be announced tonight, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that you use Brother Randy and Sister Elizabeth, Lord, in a way like they never, never dealt possible, Lord, that through their ministry, souls will be saved, Lord, in your kingdom. And we just pray, Lord, that your will be done in this service tonight, Lord. We just pray that all to be full. In your name, amen. <clears throat> all right, this first song I'm going to sing is it's called The Lighthouse. 
real quick, somebody tell me, what is the purpose of a lighthouse? To shine light. No matter where you're at, you can always see that beacon of light. And, you know, there's, there's so many things that happens in this world like this, darkness, there's things that we go through. But no matter what, Jesus is always that light. He's always there. That light is always shining. So if we'll just look to him, we know we're never alone, like I said, in the darkness. So uh, y'all pray for me as I sing this. It's a beautiful song, The Lighthouse. There's a lighthouse on a hillside that overlooks overlooks life sea when I'm tossed it sends out a light a light that I might see and the light that shines in darkness now will safely lead me over the my ship would be no more. And I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to him. For Jesus is the lighthouse. And from the rocks of sin, he has shown a light around. That I might clearly see if it wasn't for the lighthouse. Tell me where would this ship be? Everybody that lives around us say, Tear the lighthouse down. The big ships they don't sail this way anymore and it's no use it standing round but then my mind goes back to that stormy night when in just in time i saw the light yes the light from the lighthouse that stands upon the hill and i He has shown a light around me that I might clearly see if it wasn't for the lighthouse. Tell me where would this ship be if it wasn't for the lighthouse? Tell me where would this ship be?
Sorry we was late getting out of the deacons meeting. The, the clock said 5 o'clock, but it was actually 10 after. Um, but I welcome all of y'all here. This is a special evening because we're exciting and sad at the same time, I guess we can put it, of this ministry. It's a much-needed ministry in this community, in this and I, what, I'm, what I am praying and hoping out of this ministry is God get all the glory for it. And I know that he will. I've known Elizabeth, a.k.a. Melissa. <laughs> y'all, if y'all don't know it, but I've always called her Melissa for some odd reason. So, hey. But I've known both her and Randy for a long time. I know their hearts. And I know God's going to be honored out of this. And I'm not going to sit up here and take much time. I'm going to get them to go ahead and come on up. I don't know which one's going to speak first. I was telling Elizabeth the other day, I said, you're going to do fine. Don't worry about it. I said, you know, she said, yeah, but I'm going to be nervous. I said, well, good. That's, that's good. I said, I'm nervous every time I get up there. She said, I can't tell. I said, yeah, but you can't see my knees. That's why I walk a lot. The more nervous I get, the more I walk. So walk all you want, girl, if it makes you feel comfortable. You can run up and down a few and all. But, uh, huh? <laughs> right. But anyway, um, it's good to have each and every one of you here. I'm going to ask Brother Gene if he'll open us up in prayer, pray for the night service, pray for these two that's getting up here and speaking. Brother Gene. Father, we just thank you again for uh, coming to your presence. Lord, we just pray, Lord, as we go into the service, Lord, you can lead the way, Lord, and I just pray, Lord, that uh, you'll bless the ministry that Randy and Elizabeth are about to take over, and we just pray, Lord, that through them, Lord, that souls will be saved. And Lord, we 
just pray, Lord, that everything accomplished here tonight bring you nothing but praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It's been a long time coming. Uh, I've, I've, been, I've kept getting asked time and time again, when are we going to start the sound ministry back up? Uh, when are we going to start the sound ministry back up? Well, about four or five months ago, I attended a deacon's meeting with some ideas. I was tired of waiting. Uh, but my ideas was my ideas. It wasn't the Lord's ideas. Matter of fact, Brother David uh, made a statement with some of the plans I'd made. And as soon as he made that statement, the Lord told me he's right. Be patient. Well, I was patient for about four more months. And then this amazing young lady steps into the picture. Uh, can't tell you enough about how proud I am of this young lady. Matter of fact, I told a couple people earlier we're going to start calling her Tiger. <laughs> because everything that's come up, she's attacked it. She's attacked it. That's a good thing. That's a godly thing. Don't let things go. Take care of it. And that's what she's doing. If you have your Bibles, I want to share a little bit of scripture with you in, in uh, Matthew chapter 18. And we'll start reading in verse 10. I believe this was part of Brianna's favorite scripture. It says, take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man has come to save that which is lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does not he leave the ninety-nine and go to the mountains and seek the one that is straying. And if he should find it, assuredly I say to you, he rejoices more over that sheep than over the ninety-nine that did not go astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. That's basically what this ministry is all about. Thank you, Chase. I didn't ask you to stand, but Chase is used to standing at the reading of God's word. And that's an awesome thing. That's basically what this ministry is about. Uh, we're going, everywhere we go, everywhere we go to speak, we're looking for one. There might be more than one. Might be, might not be one. But I just don't believe the Lord's going to send us anywhere without having one there. Matter of fact, Pastor, every Sunday morning when you stand up here and you preach, there's one here. There's one here. Uh, I'm not so. I'm not just talking about visitors. I'm talking about church members. There's always one here. And if they're, if they're not lost, they're not walking according to the order. To. There's always one. That's sort of going to be the theme of this ministry. We're going to seek and search, seek that one. Uh, and let me get this straight. This is not our ministry. This is this church's ministry. This is the Lord's ministry that this church is serving in. And we're going to need help. Matter of fact, the Lord's already put people on my heart that I know are supposed to help. Now, if you wait for me to ask you, you'll never hear it. The Lord will tell you if you're the one. And there's more than one. So when we start having meetings here on Sunday afternoons in the very near future, we're going to need help. People that's going to be coming to this meetings are, are going to need to feel loved. And that's the only qualification really we ask to have to serve in this ministry is to love. And I'm not talking about loving them when they do good. I'm talking about love them unconditionally, even when they don't do good. Love them before they ever accept Christ as their Savior. And that's the goal. That's the first goal. Is to make sure that people we come in contact with meet Christ, to know Christ as their personal Savior. He's the one it takes to make the changes. We can't change anybody. 
All we can do is share the truth of God's word with them and share the testimony that the Lord has given us to them. Uh, I'm not going to take too much time right now. I'm going to come back a little bit later and share a couple more scriptures, uh, a couple of miracles that Jesus done, a couple of, miracles, a couple of different miracles that Jesus done. But I want to tell you something. All of you don't know this young lady very well, but I can tell you right now what she's going through. First of all, she's heartbroken. That's understandable, right? Heartbroken. Second of all, she's scared to death. Right? <laughs> she's scared. But you know what? She's the bravest young lady that I know. <clears throat> and I mean that. I don't know of anybody that could have been what she's been through these last five months and, and want to stand up and talk about it. It takes courage. She's also a tiger, like I told, told some of y'all a while ago. She's a go-getter. Y'all be patient with her and be praying with her tonight because what she's sharing is not easy. Some of y'all know it's not easy. But she's wanting to do it to give God honor and glory. And that's what it's all about. So at this time, I'm going to ask Elizabeth to come and share with us whatever the Lord put on her heart. Oh, this is a little different. <laughs> Thank God. It's a little different from the view sitting there and up here. Um, thank God, all of y'all for coming. I really appreciate it and the support. There's been mounds of support through this whole process the last five months, and I'm so blessed. People, I mean, relationships come together. There's been people that I haven't talked to in years that just popped up to see how we're doing and prayed for us, and I appreciate it. I don't even have the words to, to express how much I appreciate it. Um, before I get started, I, I want to kind of who don't know Brianna, I want to just uh, share a video of her when she was little um, and then a few pictures. She was a mess and spoiled rotten. <clears throat> I have a few pictures I'd like to share with y'all too. I was 16 when I got pregnant with Brianna and I was going to Christian school at the time. I got kicked out because it didn't look good for the other people that came in. Um, so I went through the pregnancy and had my beautiful baby girl. Um, I was released from the hospital on, on my 17th birthday with her. Best birthday present ever. Um, I was excited because I thought, okay, I'm going to bring this pretty little girl home. I'm going to put some hair bows in her hair, dress her up. I wasn't thinking what all was going to come with that, you know, the puke in and everything else. And not the not fun stuff. Uh, but she has uh, left my life. 
Um, I, I, I know everyone don't know the story, but uh, she, we lost her when she was 21, five months ago, October the 1st, to an accidental overdose. She has uh, fought a long battle. Uh, she found Jesus when she was in jail. In May 2021, just a few months before her passing. She had received a uh, Celebrate Recovery Bible in jail, and uh, that's where some of these entries are from. That's her Facebook posting. She battled, and we're all going to battle. Even if we're saved, we're still going to battle. But Jesus never leaves us. I, I saw, uh, heard this, this cute little thing on Facebook the other day, and I, and I have to share it. I think I've even shared it on Facebook. Um, tacos are messy, but we love them. We're messy, but God still loves us. So, um, like I said, she, she's, she battled for years. And I battled with her. Her whole family did. But I know that she didn't lose her battle. She, she won the afterlife. Satan still didn't win. And I know that by the journal entries that, that God has revealed to us that she was writing in this whole period. She knew Jesus, and that's what you have to do. You have to know Jesus. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a few things, that a um, few entries of her, her journal with you guys. A lot of them started out as Dear God. Not all of them. There was some pretty rough ones in there. But a lot of them started off as Dear God. Um, one thing I didn't realize about Brianna was, although she was badly and hurting, she wanted to help other people in the midst of her own pain and struggle. And I knew that, but not to the extent of what I know now. She used to write letters around Oxford, and she'd leave them in different places for people to find because she thought it'd bring them hope and strength. And I know that because of a conversation she had with my stepdad and because of her journal entries. Uh, so this is one of the letters that she had wrote. She had a few misspellings in her words, so she didn't. So that's why this entry is still in her journal. Um, it reads, to whomever has found my letter before it rained, LOL. Not sure if you believe in God or not, but I do. And while I was writing this letter, I prayed for you. I prayed and asked him to let my letter find its way to you. I hope it brings you hope. One of her when I got her Subert Recovery Bible, she, oh, there's so many markings and notes that she has in it. Her journals and her Subert Recovery Bible, they're like gold to me. I praise God for that. And that's just another God orchestrated. He's orchestrated so much through this whole, I mean, from the day she was born, he knew it was going to happen. And I look back and I'm like, oh, wow. You know, his plan is perfect. Um, one of the markings in her Subert Recovery Bible, it's, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Praise God. Uh, when Brianna, uh, 2018, Brianna, um, she was real, real deep in her addiction. We were not, we did not have a good relationship. I was angry with her. And a lot of times our conversations ended with argu arguments. And, and I would tell her, why are you doing this? Your family loves you. The ones that love you are right here. Why are you going out and leaving your family doing this? One night, I prayed because I, I just couldn't anymore. I felt like I wasn't going to be living much longer if I didn't get this stress off of me. Because I felt like I was in that addiction with her. I hurt for her, and if I could have took it away from her, I would have. 
So I kneeled down in my bathroom floor. I have a lot of kids in my house, y'all. Got to find somewhere. And I said, God, I can't do this. You got to take it. And I gave, I gave her to him. And when I did that, I felt comfort and peace about. And I looked at everything totally different from that point. I had a new perspective on love and addiction. And I realized that addiction starts with a choice. And then it becomes a disease. It, like any other disease. You can't just, I'm done, you know. We all have an addiction in our life. It may not be drugs, but it's something else. We have to continue to look at Christ and ask him to help us daily with our battle, and he will. <clears throat> like I said, he, he loves Brianna and her mess. He loves us in our mess. And just because we're saved doesn't mean we're perfect, because we're not. After we say, we're saved, we're still going to go out here and sin. It's going to happen. But when we have a close relationship with Jesus, we don't want the things like we did before, and he helps us with our struggles. And you can see that through Brianna's journal. She would be sober, and she would talk about God, and everything would be going good. Then you could tell the transition to when she struggled, and then back to sobriety. And it's just like within our life. We all struggle daily. Um, when I got the call about Brianna, I was at work, and I work in Sylacauga. It's a good distance away. I knew when I got the call. I had to call him back because I was in a, the lab where I supervise. And they asked me if I could call him back when I'm in, you know, by myself. And I was like, sure. I prayed. It was about from here to the end of the hall. <clears throat> God, please don't let that be her. Please let her be okay. But I knew. So I went in my office and I shut the door and I called him. And they told him, you know, that they had been by our house. Um, that they don't normally do it over the phone, but that she had passed. I don't remember a whole lot after that. Um, the days after that were a little bit of a blur, but I do remember the support that God has sent us. And um, I can't say I can't say how grateful I am enough for my family as well. Um, it was a, uh, a days with the funeral arrangements. But I do remember on her funeral, October the 6th, Scars in Heaven played. And oh, the Holy Spirit. Y'all, I was raising my hand at a funeral. I was like feeling him, okay? Because I knew there was no scars in heaven. And I knew where she was. And I knew where she's at. And I'm going to see her again. I know that. Um, <clears throat> sorry. I want to read a little bit of a few scriptures. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, if you have your, if you want to follow along in your Bible. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's one of the first scriptures that popped in my head. He has a plan that we don't see. But his plan is perfect, even in the midst of tragedy. It's not easy to see that sometimes. But when you, and I can speak for myself, in my brokenness, I feel like I'm a better person because I see people different. I see love. And I want to share that with everybody. John 3, 16. Most of y'all know this. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. One of my biggest prayers when the kids were, when my kids were growing up was, God, please don't let me outlive any of my kids every day. I pray that. Sounds pretty selfish, right? I didn't think about it until after Brown is passing. Wow, how can I? I mean, how dare I ask God who gave his son to die for us so that we could live to spare mine. It's because of him that I'm able to see her again. Uh, so my whole way of thinking and perspective has changed. 
but I know that this ministry is God's ministry. It is founded by God. We're the co-founders. We all are. It's founded by God. And that's what we want. We just want to share that love that, you know what, we're not going to be perfect. Nobody is, but Jesus can walk with you and he can help you. And he can carry your burdens. And he loves you. Uh, some fun facts about Brianna. She named her youngest son Camden. By the way, she has two children, Camden and Aiden. Camden's one and Aiden is five. They're my heart. She named her son Camden because she said it meant kindness. I don't know where she found that at, but <laughs> it's sweet. She told all her friends and non-family members to call her Bree because she got tired of everyone mispronouncing her name. That's my fault. <laughs> she started a rock collection. She was very proud of her rock collection. It consisted of pieces of concrete, a few creek rocks, thanks, Kason, <laughs> and one marble. Everyone used to pick at her about her marble. She would say, I know it's a marble, leave me alone. She loved the sunsets and sunrises. She also loved to gaze at the stars. She named the brightest star Nevaeh. After the baby she lost, she could imitate Mickey Mouse very well. I'm not going to even try it. <laughs> she loved to cook weird stuff in the middle of the night and leave it there for someone else to clean up. I think that's all my kids. I miss her very much. I look forward to seeing her again and hopefully helping other people that struggle like her. I know that's what he, what he would want, what she would want as well. I know she's now smiling. I know her, her death isn't in vain. We're all here for a purpose. Thank you, Brother Brown. And I love all of y'all. And I want y'all to know that. I've got... This is our Celebrate Recovery Bible, y'all. Yeah, some pretty rough shakes. Psalms 56, 13. She has marked in her Bible. Yes, Lord. For you have rescued me from death. You have kept my feet from slipping. So now I can walk in your presence, O oh God, in your life, given light. See, although she passed away from an accidental overdose, that doesn't mean, that doesn't define her life. Like I said, when you're saved, He walks with you. But we're not going to be perfect. So I challenge everyone who don't know Jesus and have tried everything that didn't and none of it worked. Try him. Why not? I promise you won't be disappointed. So thank all of y'all very much. And I love each and every one of y'all. Before I forget to tell y'all, uh, I plan on staying here as long as anybody's got questions to ask or, or comments to make. I got to, I don't know, I have to be at work around 6 in the morning. So I got to then. Uh, in all reality, this is important stuff. Uh, it's much needed. You know, the Lord receives all kind of honor and glory when somebody comes to know him as their Lord and Savior. 
I'm going to read some scripture out of John chapter 5. Starting in verse 1. It says, After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there he is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate of pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. And these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well and whatever disease he had of whatever disease he had now a certain man was there who had had an infirmity 38 years and when Jesus saw him lying there and knew he had already been there in that condition a long time he said to him do you want to be made well and the sick man answered him sir I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately, immediately, the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. And that day was a Sabbath. The reason that last part was put in there, the Pharisees was going to try to trap him because he healed somebody on the Sabbath. He done good on the Sabbath. Jesus healed him immediately. Now, I can relate to that very well. When Jesus became Lord of my life, drugs, alcohol, gone. Hadn't been back. Not only that, he changed my language. I sort of speak in tongues now, if you will. <laughs> My former language was profanity. It wasn't a complete sentence if it didn't have three or four curse words in it. They don't come out anymore. That happened immediately also. I didn't have to think about it. Didn't have to. And they don't slip out. Matter of fact, if they do slip out, I'll know something's wrong immediately. But it hadn't happened. I thank God for that. We'll turn over to John chapter 9. Verse 1. It says, Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind? These disciples were still learning. They didn't know any better. It was still learning. Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Amen. Amen. Who's the light of the world now? We're the light of the world now. Our light's supposed to shine. We can, we're not Jesus. We're going to make mistakes. But we're supposed to shine. We're supposed to be that light. Nathan sung about a lighthouse a while ago. He ain't talking about no lighthouse. He's talking about us. We're supposed to be the lighthouse. Verse 6. And when he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Salaam, which is translated scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. There's a little bit of difference in those miracles, wasn't there? Now, just because the Lord took drugs and alcohol away from me immediately, sometimes other Folks might have to do something a little different. They might have to go to a rehab. They might have to do 
they, and they need the support of the church. They need to be encouraged by the members of the church, by the people serving in this ministry. Now, we've already talked it over with the deacons. We're going to set up a fund. It's the Bree Ministry Fund. You can donate money to that ministry anytime. If you want to write a check, you can write a check to Fairview Heights Northside Baptist Church and put Bree's Ministry at the bottom of it. Now, this money is going to be used in case somebody comes in and needs to go to a rehab. We'll be able to help them get in one. But not only that, there's other things. There's supplies to be bought. We're setting up to have these celebrating recovery meetings. There needs to be workbooks purchased for that and other things. Mr. Elizabeth talked about putting a care package together. When we go to speak somewhere, they're going to have a care package with a Bible in it. That's what that's needed. People need God's word close by. Two miracles, two different ways. One of them had to go do something. Now, could Jesus have healed that blind man immediately? Sure he could. Sure he could. He could immediately heal that blind man. But he chose to get that man to go to wash the mud out of his eyes. I think sometimes some of us need to go get the mud and wash out of our eyes. I know I do. But he came back seeing. And they questioned him. Who done this? Are you the one that was always begging, blind, begging for money? Question, you're trying to trap Jesus. Well, I figured out a way to trap Jesus. <laughs> you get him right here, he's not going anywhere. And he don't know, he's not going to do anything bad or wrong either. I can honestly say we've been working on this, what, three weeks? I got complete confidence in that young lady right there. I trust her. Not only her, I trust her husband. They're the other newest members of this church, and both of them came in serving. From the before they even were members of the church, they were serving. Matter of fact, the first time they come here, this not the first time they come, but just a few months ago when they come in here, Elizabeth and I had a, a meeting scheduled to talk about this. That afternoon after church. Well, lo and behold, music director position come open. Called Nathan, talked to him about that, and here they were. Now, Nathan didn't come expecting to get the music minister position. The Lord had already put it on his heart whether he got that position or not. This is where the Lord wanted him. Come to serve. I'm thankful for people like that. We all should be thankful for people like that. We need people like that. I want to take a few minutes, and I'm going to turn it over to the pastor to thank a few people that, that really stepped up. Uh, first one I want to thank is Ray. Brother Ray, where are you at? Brother Ray Thatcher, back there in the sound booth. That man, if you got a technical something technical you want done, you just, you just hit him up, and you're, you're set. He's awesome. Uh, I know Elizabeth, he prepared this slide. Yeah, there you go. Give him a hand. And the second person I want to thank has got a real big mouth. Now, all y'all members know who I'm talking about already. They turn around looking at her. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Leslie Daniel. <laughs> when this was first announced, Miss Leslie Daniel went to work without being asked. She set up a Facebook page. Now, she did ask for input on what it was like, and Elizabeth is good at that kind of stuff. I'll let them handle that because I'm not. <laughs> but she went to work without being asked. How many more is going to do that? How many would do that? That's love for people, love for God. It's a godly example. The deacons, I want to thank the deacons. Every time we've talked about this, I've had their support. I mentioned one of them set me straight. The first time we, we met four months ago, four or five months ago and talked about it. He didn't set me straight, the Lord did. He would have went along with it, but he would have had a problem with some things that could have happened in that situation. And I would have too. The pastor. I 
love you, brother. Pastor's been my, one of my best friends way before he was a pastor. We served together at, at the youth, uh, in the youth ministry at New Haven Baptist Church. Uh, even when we wasn't serving together, we was always tight. We kept, we kept in touch. I'm thankful to have a pastor that's, that's got you back and willing to stick his neck out for you and has a love for people that he wants something like this to go forward. Has a desire to want to see lost souls saved and lives changed. That's what it's all about. In the congregation. I know y'all don't know, this section over here don't know a whole lot of people here tonight. This is the lovingest group of people I've ever been involved with. Somebody with a problem comes in this church with a drug addiction or something like that. They come in this church, they're going to be loved. They're going to know they're loved. I feel like I'm leaving somebody out. My wife. That's a mean woman, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> See, she bit me up. <laughs> I love her to death and, and uh, couldn't do nothing I'd do really without her. Nathan, thank you, brother, for sharing your wife to this ministry. Thank you for caring. Thank you for serving the way you serve. Love your heart, brother. Love you to death. If I missed anybody, I'm, I apologize. I think I covered everybody when I said the church, didn't I? Now, like I said, we're going to stick around as long as necessary. If there's anybody in here that don't know the Lord, please. Please talk to somebody. I want to ask the pastor to come up now and close the service out as he sees fit. I can honestly say I love each and every one in the building, even the ones I haven't met. Like I said, starting out with this, this is a bittersweet ministry. I knew Brianna when I met Nathan and Elizabeth at Bynum. As a matter of fact, I think she was pregnant with Aiden. And I remember one time after Aiden was born and they brought him to church, Brianna, I always thought she didn't like me. She didn't talk to me much. She'd just look at me, but then, you know, most people do. No, I'm just kidding. But she did. That was just a way about her, and I thought, well, i got to get this girl to talk to me a little bit. Because, you know. So one day she had Aiden, and I said, hey, can I hold him? And she went. She never told me no. She was like a dare. Grab him and let's see. You know, but, but no, I, all that. I knew Brianna liked me. But you know, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say it very carefully. Sometimes people that's going through struggles like that are very guarded around church people. And I want to tell you why. Because we're the most ju judgmental group in this world. No. And why? I've heard things, and let me, I'm going to say this very carefully. I heard things, well, we don't want people like that. Let me, let me back up. I've never heard it here, but I have heard it in churches I've served in. We do not want people like that in our church. Like what? I'm going to say this. If you don't want people like that in your church, I'm leaving. I struggle too. I've had struggles with drugs, alcohol, in the past. It's one reason I know the Lord and Savior. I had people that wouldn't give up on me too. Just because I'm saved don't mean we don't still struggle. Just because the Lord called me to preach and pastor don't mean I still don't struggle.
how do we get through our struggles? Together. We got the call that day about Brianna. And my heart just sank. And when I talked to Elizabeth, I said, I got no answers for you. Her main concern was with her salvation. And I'll say this to each and every one of you here this tonight. I can't know if you're saved. I told Elizabeth, I said, you don't know. It's between her and God. But God, over time, started reassuring her. That's what me and Brother Randy talk about. Hey, I know, I know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm saved. But Brother Randy don't know that I'm, I mean, he just, you see what I'm getting at. Only you, I told Brother David, we had a conversation the other day about a situation. I said, only that person can know that they're right with God. But I'm going to say this, you might be sitting here tonight, and you know, you can say, well, preacher, I know I'm saved, but I still struggle. I'm right there with you. And you say, you still struggle with drugs? No, but it's other struggles. Don't have to be, why does it have to be drugs? Why does it have to be anything else? It's just we all struggle. This side of heaven, we're going to struggle. You know, our Savior even struggled a little bit. Oh, we know he was perfect. Yeah, he was perfect, but he still struggled. You know, part of, and I told this to the congregation this morning, part of Jesus' struggle was he knew that that cross was going to separate him from us. But the reason he done this was to glorify his Father so that a young girl struggling with drugs and alcohol can know a Savior. Like Brother Randy said, I never noticed that way. He said, one he told to rise and one he told to go. You can, and I know that I'm going to say this and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut up. Here's, a, here's what I've heard. Well, people that's been saved won't struggle like that. I'm going to tell you what I've read now. I'm going to... Kind of paraphrase is what I read about the a person that cleans up gets their heart cleaned up. It says Jesus compared it like this: you sweep it clean and run that devil out of there, that demon out of there, and that demon goes back and finds seven more stronger than him, and he comes back. And back. See. Here's why Christian folks struggle with struggle is because sometimes we don't understand who to turn to. You say, well, they got saved, they knew who to turn to. Yeah, but see, what happens is once they got saved and they started struggling, somebody in the church kicked them while they were down. Like I go back to saying, we don't want them kind of folks in our, in our church. I'm going to say this, and I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to repeat something else that Somebody is saying, oh, I am. This is not your church. It's not mine. This church was built to worship, honor, and glorify the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This church, if we look at church, is a refuge for sick folks. It's a hospital. It's a hospital for the sick. And it's a place for saints, for saints to come in and get uh Revigor, re reorganize and all that and go right back out. Jesus never turned anybody away. Never, none of them. Jesus chose Judas Iscariot even though he knew Jesus was going to betray him and loved him anyway. So tonight, I'm going to ask you, I'm not going to close it out because I know there's a couple more things, but this is what I want to do. Nathan, y'all go ahead and come up and get ready. Y'all don't have to sing right yet. Y'all just go ahead and come up and get ready. This altar down here in front of me is open. 
And I'm going to ask you tonight, if you've never accepted Jesus in the free pardon of sin, you'll come down here and ask him. Well, how do I do that? You just ask him. What do I pray, Lord? I, I, I'm, I'm a sinner. Help me. You want me to tell you what I pray? Lord, save me. That's it. No, nothing fancy. There's no combination or nothing like that. But if you know that you've been saved and you say, Preacher, I'm struggling. He's here to help you with them struggles. I promise. I'm here to help you with them struggles. If there's nobody else in this building, I'll help you whatever way I can. See, salvation comes two ways. First, you accept him in his heart, in your heart, and then you let him take control of your life. It's called surrendering. There's a lot of Christians that are struggling because they've never surrendered. So whatever you're struggling with, whatever you need tonight, as these are singing and playing up here, this altar's wide open. If you need somebody to pray with you, just grab somebody. If they don't want to go, grab me. I'll come down there with you. So I, I'm going to turn it back over to them. Whatever you need, you please come.
Hey, where'd she go? Remember the first time she sang that song was right here for us. I'd invited her to come and sing. And it's just like the moment she opened her mouth, the Holy Spirit moved. And there's just something about that song. I don't know how to close this, Brother Randy. So I'm not. Can Nathan, can we play something? I'll get somebody to just pray. We won't close this service out. It don't have to be nothing special. We can do a verse of amazing grace if you want to. Church, I'm going to ask you to stand. I want to I'll do a couple of verses that if we can. And I want to give one more opportunity. Well, not one more, but I want to give another opportunity. If you need a touch from the Savior tonight, I pray as we sing and we play, these guys and ladies play, that you come. Don't be bashful. Don't be shy. There's nobody going to judge you in here. Like we come as you are. Don't sit back there and say, well, I'm not ready. I need to clean up. You're never going to clean up enough to come. You'll always have something to work on. So as we sing, do what God has told you to and come.
Like Randy said, if you need to talk to somebody and answer questions, him and Elizabeth's here. They got more uh, more answers on this ministry than I would have for you, but I'll. It's especially yeah, especially if you need to volunteer. One thing I've let everybody know is God won't tell me to tell you to do it. He'll come to you directly. So if God's telling you to help in whatever way, you get with them and help. I'm not closing this out. When I step down, we're dismissed. Anybody got a testimony or anything they want to do? Uh, go ahead, brother. Come on. Shared this with Sister Elizabeth this morning. Here's a plan for this ministry. We don't know where it's going. <laughs> we know it's not stopping. Amen. We don't know where it's going. So we're going to follow the one who does. When Jesus stops, we're going to kneel down at his feet and seek his direction. And then when he starts moving, we're going to walk right behind him as close as we possibly can. Not beside him. I hear people all the time, people say all the time, I got the Lord by my side. Well, you might go one way and he might go the next. Stay right behind him. Follow him. Don't get in front of him. Just follow the Savior. Life's a whole lot easier. I, I love y'all. Y'all dismissed.